Another example of being able to find the volume of revolution, rotating the area this time down by y equals two cos x, y equals zero um, over pi fourths, pi thirds, rotated about the x axis. All right, so initially it looks like it's pretty easy because it actually gives us the bounds. It tells us that we're going to rotate it about the x axis. Okay, so remember whenever you see y equals zero, that just means that we have the x axis. All right, um, and it gives us a fairly tame function, all right? So remember two cosines of x, the cosine function starts um, up here, since it's two, um, this is gonna be two, um, and it's gonna do something like this, okay? So we're going from pi fourths to pi thirds, all right? So this is the area that we want to revolve about the axis, all right? So when we set up our integral, okay? Remember our volume, is going to be equal to pi integral from a to b of the function squared. And then that's going to be your radius. So your area is pi r squared. And then dx is going to be all the little disks. Okay. By the way, when we rotate it, when we rotate it, okay, we're going to get something like this, okay, about the axis. All right. So uh, so it's going to look like you know two pancakes, one bigger, one smaller, kind of pushed together. All right. Um, and then in decreasing sizes or increasing, depending upon which way you want to go. All right, so we set this up, pi, integral pi fourths, pi thirds, two cos x, quantity square, dx. All right, now we know that we're going to square the two, it's going to be four, so we get four pi integral, pi fourths, pi thirds, cos square dx. All right. Now, a common misconception among students is that they take this and they integrate it as cos cube x over 3. All right. And that is not correct. Okay. So this is where we have to go back to the previous unit where we looked at all those techniques of integration. And one thing you might remember is that the cosine has a power reducing formula. Remember that cos square of x is equal to 1 half plus one half cos of two x, all right? So we have to, we can't forget about all those techniques of integration that we've learned, okay? In fact, they're gonna be the vehicles which with we could be able to evaluate these functions and these integrals. So this is now gonna become four pi integral, pi fourths, pi thirds, quantity one half plus one half cos, to x dx, all right? Now, we're gonna integrate term by term and then the hardest parts would be at the end where we have to evaluate, right? Because we're gonna to have to substitute pi thirds and pi fourths back in, okay? So this is gonna become now four pi, antiderivative of one half is gonna be one half x. Um, antiderivative of one half cos two x is gonna be one half antiderivative of cos is positive sine, but remember there's a 2x here, all right? And the 2x, you're gonna use the reverse chain rule. So that means instead of multiplying by two, you are going to divide by two, all right? So this would be another half in there from pi fourths to pi thirds, all right? Now, when we substitute, okay? So this is gonna be the toughest part is substituting and actually getting a precise answer. All right, and this is the stuff you guys want to make sure of that you can do on your examinations, all right? So by substituting, we get four pi, one half of pi thirds, plus a quarter of the sine of two pi thirds. And then we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna substitute pi fourths back in, okay? So this is gonna be a half of pi fourths plus a quarter sine of two pi fourths, which is really the same as pi halves, okay? So, um, so you could just immediately simplify that into uh, pi halves. All right, now back to our friend unit circle, all right? We wanna make sure that we understand how to evaluate these trig functions, all right? So here's our unit circle, all right, as best as we can. Um, one angle is going to be pi halves, the other angle, two pi thirds, okay? So these are like our two um, points here, all right? So 
we know this point right here is zero, one. And remember, we always want the y coordinates for sine. So the sine of pi halves is one. So that makes things really nice. However, over here, right, for pi thirds, we have negative one half root three over two. All right, and that gets a little bit uglier, but the sine of our two pi thirds is root three over two. All right, so let's simplify this, okay, and see if we can get some sort of unified answer out of this. And of course, we could check it with Wolfram Alpha. Okay, so um, we have four pi times, this is going to now be pi six, okay, so I just multiplied those together, plus a quarter of root three over two, minus four pi. Um, this is now going to be pi eighths. And then we get a quarter times one. So that's just going to be plus a quarter. All right, so now it looks a lot better um, without those trig functions in there. We can now distribute and simplify. Okay, so we're going to get four pi pi or four pi square over six. So that's actually going to be two pi square over three when we simplify. So here, and then distributing here, the fours are just going to cancel out and we're just left with pi roots of three over two. Uh, we have minus four pi square over eight or just pi square over two. And then finally, this is just going to be minus pi. All right. The only thing I think that we can reasonably combine, okay, before we get to a singular fraction, are going to be these two terms because they both have a pi square in there. So if we get a common denominator of six, that's going to be four pi square over six, which would, is what it started with, minus three pi square over six by getting common denominator. And so these two terms are going to combine into pi square over six. And so our answer, or one way to write it, is going to be pi square over six plus pi roots of three over two minus pi. Okay. Um, and then finally, another way that we could write it is if we get a common denominator of six and write everything over six. So if we do so, that's going to be pi square over six plus we would multiply this by three. Okay, and so that would be three pi roots of three over six. And then finally, we would multiply this by six. All right, so this would be minus six pi. All right, so this is our most unified answer. Okay, it's not, uh, it's not pretty, it's pretty. Right? In fact, it's, it's kind of nasty looking, but it is what it is. Okay, that's our answer. Now, let's go into Wolfram Alpha and see, first of all, if our diagram looks like it's just like, you know, two portions of this sine function that are revolved about the axis. But moreover, of course, what we're really interested in is making sure that this is the volume. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we are going to rotate y equals 2 cos of x um, over, and we said it was from pi thirds or pi fourths to pi thirds. And we're going to rotate that about y equals 0. All right, so. Now, remember, we had a really nasty um, answer for this. All right, so if we go down here, now, of course, we're going to have to distribute. Okay, so remember, we had a negative pi. Okay, so we're flipping back here. We should have like a negative pi, and that's going to be right here. So negative 6 and 6, so it cancels to a negative pi. So that's good. Um, and then also, we have um, 3 roots of 3 over 6, or 3 roots of 3 pi over 6. So we have three roots of three pi over six, it's positive. And then we have pi square over six. So hopefully we have a pi square somewhere in here. Um, and then pi times pi over six, so that's gonna be your pi square over six. Okay, so that looks good. Um, our answer looks correct for this. And then um, right here, remember we had like a circle bound by, and then another circle that was a little bit smaller in our diagram that we had before. All right, so it kind of looks like that. Um, I know in the picture, it, it just kind of looks at just this section in Wolfram Alpha, okay? So, um, so keep in mind that if you do try to sketch this for yourself, 
Um, it might not look precisely what like Wolfram Alpha has, but it should look roughly what it has. Okay, so and you want to try to vision envision what it is that you're actually trying to find the volume of each time, which is probably going to be good for you um, when you go to sketch these. Okay, all right, two more examples, and then we'll be done with this section. Um, the last two examples we're going to look at is what if we have more than one function that's going to be um, rotated about an axis. 